Can you say amen? Let's put our hands together and clap. Help us out. Thank you. 
Go ahead and give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord God. We're going to slow it down.
conqueror, Lord God. You are our life. You are the way, you are strength. We give you all the praise and all the glory belongs to Jesus. Now we're going to take a minute here and uh, we're going to, while in the presence of the living God, we're going to pray for needs. Amen. I'd like to lift up firstly, Pastor Greg and Lisa Mitchell. Let's pray for the Morales, the Galvanza Hearts and the Cassios. And I'd also like to pray for Anthony Cassio in um, uh, Lynn, Massachusetts. That's right north of uh, the city of Boston. Amen. And we're going to be traveling there and I'm going to ask you to pray for him this evening. We're going to pray also for our impact team. We're sending a group of individuals to go there and help him to pass out flyers and win people to Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to uh, pray uh, on uh, uh, Saturday especially, amen. We're going to be traveling, praying for God's traveling mercy. Let's also pray for Paul and Linda Campo, the Guineers, the Suspanskis, and I'd like to lift up Jean LaValle in Toronto and uh, their new churches. They sent up two churches in their April conference. Let's pray for that those families to have success. And uh, when they enter their city, amen, they do declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And there's going to be authority and anointing upon their labor. Let's pray for miracles. Amen. We have some requests here, a number of requests from our town here in... Uh, let's pray for Greece. Uh, there's a Jamaican family that started coming. Let's pray for Monica, Fantasia, Sherry, and Marquion. Let's pray for Brian Rodriguez, amen, and our police officers and firefighters yes. here in this town, our active military, and our veterans also that God would overshadow their lives. And then Naya and her daughter came to church two Sunday nights ago. Let's pray for her conversion, uh, the, uh, the breaking of addictions. Let's believe God for, amen, Wanda, this is uh, Michelle's friend who prayed last week for salvation. Let's pray for wholeness to her thinking and to live for God. The peace of Jerusalem, amen, and uh, comfort for the families of those loved ones who were lost, amen, on October 7th attack. Let's pray for the Gaza Strip, all those hostages to be returned. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem and let's pray for God's hand to allow Israel to protect herself against uh, the onslaught of evil, amen. There is no peace in the Middle East right now. Amen. And we're going to pray for miracles. I'd like to pray also for Teresa Williams and Tabby Benetti. Let's pray for the play that's coming here. Amen. In two weeks. And let's pray for Mivita Loca. That God gets a hold of people and blesses them with salvation. Yes. Amen. Gives them the peace that they uh, are suffering without in life. Amen. The anxiety, the fears, the insanity of living. Trying to do it without Jesus is just crazy to me. So let's pray for those people who are not saved, and let's pray for people when they come into this building on that Friday evening, let's pray that they sense the presence of God and there's yes. anointing upon the production. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to pray with me. Let's uh, pray right now. Perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention. I'm gonna ask you to lift your hand. You have a need and God wants to help you. Amen, God sees hands going up. Amen, let's believe God for revival. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. We're gonna pray and let's all stand up in God's presence and uh, uh, Terrell's gonna open us up in prayer, amen. God, you're an awesome God. We thank you, God, for what you're gonna do, God. God, we're not uh, going to rest until you bring revival, God, until you heal the sick, God, until you work miracles, until, uh, God, as we're contending, you give us a breakthrough, Lord, God, nothing's impossible with you, Lord, God, uh, you do the difficult things, Lord, God, to help our families, Lord, God, to put a protection and an enabling, God, raise us up as uh, laborers, God, raise us up as workers and soldiers for Christ, God, help us to have an impact in our town, in greater righteousness, Lord, God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to descend upon this service, God, bring anointing and unction to this servant, Lord, God, let it uh, take a, a root in our hearts, God, I pray, clear it, cleanse every conscience, Lord God. Give us abilities. God, give us wisdom, God. Pour out your wonder-working power, Lord God. 
Thank you for our fellowship, God, the new churches, Madagascar. I pray for Hong Kong, God. I believe in you, God, for every island nation, God. Give us favor, Lord God, as we plant churches, God. As we're making disciples here, Lord God, people learning, people growing in Christ, we pray, God. I pray for a diverse working here in this church, God. Give us Latinos. Give us Africans, God. Give us island peoples and Asians, God. Give us Koreans, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. We're so grateful, God, for what you're doing, God. And we're re relying upon you, Lord God. There's no one else but you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for allowing us to be in this nice service, Lord. For giving us the energy to come to a nice service, Lord. Lord, today, um, I want to just thank you for everything you have done for me and my family, and I will always thank you for the rest of my life. Seven. But we know without you, it is impossible to do anything without you, Lord. And I will keep on saying that to the grave, Lord. But we know that you are our all-powerful God, Lord. We know that you are only present, Lord. And we know that you are everywhere, Lord. Yes. Everywhere in here, Lord, everywhere in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, Lord. Lord, I ask that you change out our hearts, Lord, to be like you, Lord. Lord, to strive to be like you and seek your face, Lord. Lord, I ask that you that we touch your hand in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, let us let us let us let us feel how you feel, Lord. Let us speak how you speak and let us see how you see, Lord. Lord, I ask that you to open our eyes, Lord, to see what's happening in this world, Lord, and happening in our lives, Lord. Lord, any spirit that's trying to attack us, Lord, I ask yeah. that you remove it in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes. For nothing for me against me shall prosper, yes. Lord. Yes. And every yes. time that right against me shall not be, shall be condemned, Lord. Mm. Yes. Lord, we know that we are sinful from the, from the womb, as it says in Psalm 51, Lord. But we know that you kept your faith in us, Lord. You kept your grace and mercy, Lord. Because Jesus died on the cross for us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, yes, Lord. we love you, and I ask for all your blessings, Lord. Amen. 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 And uh, there's a second service for those online. You may be unaware of this, but we have a night service, full out worship, glorifying God. Isn't God good to visit us? Amen. Yes, yes. And uh, we have prayer at 5:30, 6:30 is our evening service. We have a midweek service at 
uh, 7.30 on Wednesday, and we pray at 6.30. You guys can sit down if you want to. Amen. And uh, I want to let you know about uh, our... Normally, we're going to be outreaching on Saturdays at 11. We like to go door to door, down to Walmart. We had great success. Uh, and I'm going to ask somebody to give the testimony in a minute. But we like to talk to people. We are a people church. Yes. We love people. We love the Lord. Amen. amen. And until you get that, amen, you're not going to enjoy the vision of our fellowship. Because we're a going church. We want to go outside the four walls of the church. Whether that's with you on your job or in your car to your home to your neighborhood, amen, take Jesus with you, amen, and think about, amen, bringing some of the church on uh, two weeks from last Friday is Mi Vida Loca. La Vida Loca. <laughs> and we have Abuela with us, she's the grandmother in the play, and so the musical is going to be you? awesome, there's a little yeah. bit of um, reggaeton and a little bit of hip hop, rapping and singing and incredible drama. Raw, in your face, real life drama that people are going through. People have no answers. Amen. They have many uh, baby, you know, baby mamas and baby papas and all kinds of insanity in our generation. Yes. Right? Yeah. Drugs are the current. Uh, you know, they're pushing dope. That's you know, your little boy is going to be a tried. They're going to try to get him in their gang. I'm telling you, man. You have to realize the generation in which we live is wicked and corrupt yes. and without the gospel being preached there's no hope amen no. if you're putting your hope in the, vo the presidential uh, election amen forget about it right. yeah. amen put your hope in king jesus yes. vote for yes. him yes. and god will bless you and i together so think about the uh medina local take some flyers with you hit people in your neighborhood amen the following friday we have a movie night uh last month we showed fireproof which was an awesome very hilarious gospel presentation but with a deep impact we had one man uh, one father get saved at that event so think about bringing somebody to that and who knows what god can do with the anointing that's upon the gospel film amen we also have a marriage retreat for those who are married on the 20th and the 21st uh, with steve bowman in our mother church and that's in the brighton campus uh, think about going together with us there. Uh, the, um, he's having a revival the following week, and so Steve Bowman is going to be uh, preaching the entire following week. We are going to be attending two services, the Monday and the Tuesday of that week. If you'd like to join us, that would be tremendous. You can see uh, the greater picture of what our fellowship is all about. Amen. Maybe you can't see it right here. But uh, the spirit that you're sensing here this evening is the same spirit that you'll find in our mother church. And uh, God will bless you if you make time for him. And I'm sure of that. Let's go ahead and change the order of our service. Uh, I missed one event, and that is we're planning to go to Canada on the 28th. If you'd like to go with us uh, as an impact team, we'll, we're going to bring the gospel there and bring our testimonies and go outreach for Clyde and Sukum in Scarborough, Canada. Uh, amen. If you have a desire to go with us, and let's see if you've got your passport in order or you have some kind of um, form of uh, enhanced representation. ID. Enhanced ID will get you across to, and hopefully get you back home. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Let's change the order of our service. And um, uh, does somebody want to give the testimony about what happened yesterday on outreach? Well, we uh, like to go out into our town here, into the town of Greece. We've been all the way over uh, down in North Greece Road, and uh, we've been all the way even over to Manitoba. And we've been going door to door, knocking on doors, talking to people about Jesus. Um, yesterday, we went to Walmart, and we were able to uh, pass out plenty of these flyers. And everybody, uh, I, don't, I think there was one person out of 100 people who said, no, no, thank you. And we were passing off flyers. Everyone's excited to come and fill this building. We have two shows. We could probably pack in 110 people in here if you want to try to do that with me. Okay. I would greatly appreciate it. You know why? Because God loves people. And yes. they're just not aware of it, man. And if we could somehow deposit the words of everlasting life, amen, and the solution is Jesus, we might be able to get some people saved. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and change the order of our service. And let's take our offering from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 
verses 13 through 50. I'm going to read here in a moment. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but by an equality that now at this time, the abundance, your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack, so that there may be an equality. In that, as it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. So God is hoping that we will all pull together our load. Amen. That is our responsibilities. There's not many rich among us. Can you say amen? Amen. But we all have a certain income, a financial obligation to give, to pay our tithes. That's 10% of your increase. Amen. And then there's offerings besides that we can give to the work. We can give to the impact team. We can rent a truck so we can bring the band up to Canada. There's different obligations and different financial needs that we have in this church that we're not going to be able to do unless we all pull together our own share. Amen. Some people might make more or less than other people. What matters is that we all give. Amen. Paul is speaking of an equality that we all invest in eternity together. Amen. I'm going to ask the usher to come forward. Amen. And collect the money so that you can be blessed. Amen. The Bible says when you pay your tithes, all of heaven is open. From Malachi 3.10. Think about that. And then as you're wondering, do I give? Um, yeah, why don't you wait up here for a second. We're going to put a, a little prayer behind that money. Okay, you can, you watch me. S stay right here. That's right. This is his first time, I think. You wait, and I'm going to teach you how to pray. So can we bow our heads right now? Lord, we thank you for our finances. We thank you for the money that you're blessing us with. Take it. And help us to be wise as stewards or managers over this money. Yeah. We're careful to give you the glory. We're careful to pay our tithes and give offerings also. We ask this evening that you <coughs> bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone Amen. said? Amen. 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 Say that. Bless the gift and the giver. Amen. No, say bless the gift and the giver. Bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Good job. Thank you for your giving. You want my money? Oh, okay. Pastor Ty's too, you know. Wait, can, I, can I say a prayer? No, we're going to do that next time. Thank you for your help today. You look Good nice job. with your haircut. It's not ready for school. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, the book of John, chapter 6. We're going to read a short scripture here before we uh, dive into this. And then the Bible is the word of life. If you want the word of life inside of you, you're going to have to start reading. Spending time reading your Bible is going to uh, teach you and show you all about the God of eternity. Amen. So studying the Word of God is critical for our success. Amen. Anybody hear of a man by the name of Richard Dawkins? No. No one's ever heard of him. He's a famous atheist. And he said this to try to confuse everybody. He said, evolution will generate an illusion of design so persuasive that it is almost impossible to distinguish it from deliberate, intelligent design. Many of us believe that this is no accident that we are here, that uh, uh, every molecule, every atom in the universe has been placed by God, that God has 
created all things. Right? Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God spoke. God spoke the world into existence through His Word. And I would like to read our scripture, John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Amen. Let's pray. God, you're an awesome God. I pray your illumination tonight. I pray for divine revelation into the words that we speak, God. Let our hearts be open. Let our hearts be cultivating a relationship with you, God, that our speech might be tender, might be careful, Lord God, and that we might realize the power of our speech and the power of words. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 33, verse 9. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. I want to preach about the words of life tonight, because I believe that God really wants to help us. Amen. To avoid damaging words. These are all words that begin with a D. Damaging words. Damning words. Destructive words. Discouraging words. Demonic words. And how about unspoken words? Those are words that never got said. When we should have said something, but they were omitted. And we failed to speak those words of life to somebody. Amen. Speaking words in prayer is very powerful. We always have somebody open up in prayer. You'll notice that we like to praise God. We, we lift our voices. We sing with everything inside of us. You know why? Because your words release realities. Your words are spirit. Like Jesus said, my words are spirit. And when you speak, there's something behind it. Your words invite destiny. Lord, I believe you that you're going to double this church in a month. I believe that you're going to save my father and my mother. I believe that you have a destiny for me. That I'm going to be used of God. That I'm going to be witnessing to somebody. And they're going to be like, you know, I was just thinking about that. I was like, what a crazy life I'm living. God is going to <coughs> release your destiny inside of yourself. As you're speaking words, the right words, speaking words, singing words in a worship service. We're not just going to hum the tune. Can you say amen? amen. Boy, that would be silly. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not going to try to do anything like yeah. that. Lift it, you lift your voice. You put some energy behind it. Amen. And when you're singing, amen, it's twice as powerful. And when you put some volume behind it, you put your heart into it. How many like to sing in the car to the radio? Yep. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you know nobody's there, so that could be a good thing if you're like a little pitchy or you don't know the words. But you sing at the top of your lungs if you're listening to Caleb or Family Life. Yes, Family Life. And you're just <laughs> enjoying the presence of God. There's nothing like that. <clears throat> you know that this, this is not a whispering type church. We're not quiet like the Catholic Church. Do you remember the Catholic Church? Shh. Yeah. Quiet. You don't want to disturb anything. I mean, I was brought up in the Catholic Church. I know all about it. And there's a lot of noise in this church. Can you say amen? We have kids. We have people who have, uh, they cough, they, you know, they laugh. It's okay to say amen once in a while. Can you say amen? Amen. Hello, church. Hello. <laughs> Praise God. Everyone. You know, in that old church, they had to be quiet. Shh. And they had this impression that being holy or reverent was just, you know, there's a, I understand there's a place for that. 
But generally, there's a power that is released, an energy is released when you lift your voice and your spirit, amen. Your spirit rejoices when you celebrate God's power. It's not a quiet ceremony. I mean, I've been in prayer at times and I've just been sitting there and it was powerful. But generally, when I get into prayer, I'm speaking words. I'm praying for families. God help Abuela to remember her words in the prayer. You know, I'm speaking words. I'm not just going to think it. I speak it out. Right. And there's something that helps me to position me. Like, I pray for every individual here. Help yeah. Lillian to figure out how to raise this little, beautiful, incredible, <laughs> potential man of God. Yes. Right? I'm praying every morning for each and every one of you. I don't know if it comes out quite that nice, but I'm praying for yeah. miracles. I'm releasing those words for your destiny, for helping your life. And this is not a hush-hush expression of your love. It's an intensity to words that I choose when I speak. Think about the last football game you went to. Our brother's uh, playing football now. And I'm going to go to his first game. Or, uh, there's a scrimmage coming up. Do you think I'm going to be quiet on the sidelines? Terrell! Go for it! Go! Let's go! Red, let's go! Ready. You're not going to be quiet. <laughs> Terrell, this guy behind you is about to knock your block off. <laughs> I'm going to scream it. Run! Think about the, the football game. You know, everybody in the, in the stands are screaming for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Can't you think of a better team? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know. Oh, man. It's fighting words around here. First, I want to look at our need to have access to words of affirmation. Amen. This is the, the context of what I'm talking about. Some people are brought up in homes where there's very little positive words that would raise the kids to understand that they're protected. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. Yes. And they're brought up in a home and there's no words of comfort like that or affirmation. You got this, bro. I know you only got a D on your report card, but maybe next time you get a C. Right? There's Amen. words of affirmation, you know, maybe they were missing the, the love, and, and so there's like a hole in their heart. There's a spirit of rejection that comes on people when in their homes, as being raised, there was no positive reinforcement for the good things that they were doing. Very little love. Amen. Maybe you have a spirit of rejection tonight. And you need to get rid of it. Amen. Because it's not helping you. Your mom and dad... Uh, you, maybe you had a mom and dad, but they they didn't have much affection for you. They never really pat you on the back or gave you a hug or you know said that's okay, man. We're gonna it's, we're gonna figure it out. You know there was no a physical touch in that home. Yeah. Uh, and many people who don't have moms and dads, there's a giant hole in their hearts yeah. for not having a mom and a dad. They never hear heard those words. I'm proud of you, son. And they ne maybe they never spoke into your heart. Sometimes words need to be spoken to clear the air, to define the love that you have for your children mm -hmm. and all the great people in your life. Think about your spouse. Think about appreciating them and telling them, you know, I love you. I, I, I'm with you. We're going to make this happen. We're going to work it out, honey. Come hell or high water. I said I do. I'm going to live with you. I'm gonna, we're going to work this out. And you're speaking words, amen, to strengthen that relationship. Maybe it's your mom, your dad, or your grandparents. You can speak to them. Maybe there's people in your church that need a positive word of affirmation. You know, I'm glad to see you. It's great to see you. I'm glad you came. That kind of stuff really, it, it encourages people. When you come to church, you bring you, and that's very helpful to other people. Amen. Try this once in a while. I really appreciate you. 
And you're not making it up. It's not just a trick. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I remember um, one of my old, um, one of the old preachers, I, I had no idea uh, that he even knew me. And he came up to me, he did a revival, and he said, you know, Paul, I want to let you know that I appreciate you. Amen. And it was just like, wow, how do you know me? I mean, I've been around for a while, but he just, he just said that to me, and it really touched my heart. And your faithfulness to this church has made an impact upon other people. Don't ever forget it for the good. Most people are word people. They appreciate words. They are deeply affected by words. And when you're, uh, you know, you're speaking words to them, they are going to be blessed. Amen. There's words of affirmation. Secondly, I want to look at, we need to be able to give positive words that are spoken vocally. It's not just a little letter. I mean, that, that can be good, a text. Maybe throughout the week you're, you're remembering something. Hope you're having a good week. You could text that or send some hearts or some, you know, girly <laughs> things to your girlfriends, right? And they'll be like, wow, I, I made a thought of. That's nice. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to be in prayer. I'm going to, Come to church. I'm going to be in relationship. There are words of affirmation. Uh, positive. You're building up other people. It's the word edify that means that you're strengthening somebody else. Words that are edifying have an effect of healing and blessing other people. We had this thing when my wife and I were uh, just brought, uh, not teenagers, but we were um, just young people, young converts in the church. And when somebody started saying something negative, we would you'd be like, edify, edify. You know? <laughs> you'd be on a, a, a trip out of town or something up to Canada. And uh, it'd be a long trip. That's like seven hours or eight hours to be on the road. But, you know, your flesh would kind of get rubbed the wrong way. And we would wind up saying, edify, edify. Amen. That means build somebody else up. Let's look at a few scriptures to uh, verify this. And to show the meaningfulness of words of affirmation. Proverbs 16, 24, if you're taking notes. Gracious words are sweet like a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Some of you talk like a pickle. <laughs> it's like bitter, like what? That doesn't taste good. But when we use words of affirmation, gracious words... That means undeserved words sometimes. That'll really bless somebody. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. There's power in the words that you are speaking. Proverbs 25, 11. Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a word spoken in right circumstances. Sometimes you say things, they're good things, but they're at the wrong time, honey. They don't belong at this juncture in time. And it could be the simplest thing, but when you put it in the, the right place, you just insert it at the right time, it can be very helpful. Can you say amen? amen. Proverbs 25, 25, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. It's refreshing. It's something that is satisfying. Proverbs 31, 26 speaks about the virtuous wife. Amen. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instruction with kindness. Amen. That is a virtuous wife. Amen. You know, wife, if I could just preach out of my notes for a second here. You know, when you use words that are destructive and hurtful, many times you're destroying your house. You're tearing it down, the Bible says. Yes. Amen. But words that you speak that to your children, amen, they'll never forget it. To your husband, it strengthens him. It helps him to realize that he is a man and that you appreciate him. That's some little advice. That's not in my notes, so if you... Want to take that? Maybe God will help you. I want to secondly look at avoiding harmful words. 
Amen. The danger of the tongue. James teaches from chapter 3, verses 3 through 6, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is the whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. So I know James is he's, he's utilizing a lot of fancy poetic language about fire. How great a forest fire is kindled. You heard about the forest fires in California. Somebody threw a cigarette butt out the window. And hundreds of thousands of acres, miles and miles, as far as you can see, is a scorched earth. That's kind of like the words that you use sometimes. You can't change the landscape from being completely destroyed. Billions of dollars of homes have been ravaged by one little cigarette butt mm -hmm. out the window. Think with me about the power of the tongue. It's very dangerous. There are some things you say and you wish you could get it back. You're like, oh, I said that. You're trying to grab it. It's like those dandelion seeds when you were a little kid. You picked them up. My grandson starts blowing them and they go all over the place. They're in his hair. They're everywhere. You can't get them back. Right. They're gone. They're blowing all over the yard. And that's the picture that James is trying to show us. You can't take it back. It's very difficult. You like to say the word Sorry. Do you ever hear somebody say that? Yeah. And it doesn't really work because those words have already been like a dagger, right? And then they twisted it and they said something else. It's, there's no way of changing it. Really? Except for repentance, of course, or like getting a new heart. They're so cruel and hurtful sometimes. And you regret it. Why did I say that? I really didn't mean that. You get in a fight with your spouse or somebody else and you get your job and you say things that you regret. You can apologize all you want to, but that doesn't change what has happened. Amen. What really is important is what's going on in your heart. It's not changing your heart at all. There's things inside your heart that are actually just kind of leaking out, you could say. Yeah. And we're realizing what's going on inside of you when you speak. In the heat of the moment, it all boils up to the surface and we can see what you're really thinking. Yep. And we hear how you are actually feeling inside. This is why there's a, a danger to the unruly tongue. The person who just doesn't care about how they come off or how hurtful that those words are going to be or how they disrespect people. Yep. They're saying things to people they have no right to say that to them. Right? I don't even know you. How can you say that to me? Right. And it's like it just comes off the wrong way. Sometimes people are just, they feel that way. They're, they're wrapped up in their emotions. And they want to get their pound of flesh. They want to get back at you. They want to get revenge. And so they say things that they really shouldn't. There's damaging words. Think about acting. Acts 16, verses 16 through 24. It describes the encounter of Apostle Paul with a slave girl who has a spirit of divination. She's crying out after Paul. These men are the servants of the Most High God. That's true. But there's something on those words that are demonic and they start to annoy Paul. And he says, Spirit, leave. And he casts that spirit out. And she's completely freed and delivered. She probably doesn't speak like that anymore. Amen. She's saying all the right things, but with the wrong spirit. Think about that for a minute. Some people come to church, they like to play the Holy Ghost. Especially the new converts or new people in the church. Uh, or people uh, that, you know, have, haven't been around for very long. They don't really realize, you know, a new convert doesn't even know what's happening. What's going on here? Why is this happening to me right now? 
right? Mm -hmm. They don't see the significance of it because people speak with the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. Some people show up to church, they just start digging into other people, pointing the finger. They're saying things that are not appropriate or it's not the right time that they should say those things. Or maybe they have the wrong spirit. They're not sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And therefore, although they might mean to do well, they do more damage than anything. And this is what is hurtful. That's why, as a shepherd, as a pastor, it's my job to protect my flock and to protect those people. You know, Jesus said something interesting about this kind of condition here. Jesus said, first remove the beam that is in your own eye before you try to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Some people like to criticize other people. You're doing things the wrong way. Yeah. You know, anybody ever tell you you're raising your kid the wrong way? Yeah. <laughs> I know I got you. But the point is that you, you're supposed to first remove that log. You're walking around life with a two by four sticking out of your, out of your eyeball, right? You can't even see other people's problems properly. So Jesus said, first remove that log that is in your own eye so that you can, maybe you will be able to help other people and speak into their lives. Yes. In other words, deal with your own problems first. Then later you can help others. But not until you fix your own life. Amen. Amen. Number six, people have careless words. Matthew 12, verse 36, but I tell you that every careless word that men speak, they will give an accounting on the day of judgment. Do you realize that? That ought to make you shudder. Because if you believe that God is you know, not a dopey old man up in the sky, but he's omnipresent, he's everywhere, he hears everything mm -hmm. that you're saying, right? It's like, how many have Siri in your house, right? Sometimes my phone actually takes my conversation and then starts sending me ads. I didn't even know what happened. My phone is listening to me. Mm -hmm. How much more is Almighty God up in heavens? He's got his pen out. And this is not a pen, it's a battery. He's right. What did you did you hear? He's writing everything down that you ever said. That's crazy. He can't erase it. There's no magic eraser in heaven. But everything, you and I are going to give an account to God for everything that we've done and even things that we've said and things that we've thought. This ought to like make you sit up in your comfortable blue chair tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Careless words are corrupted. Careless words can cut at others. Matthew 20, excuse me, Matthew 12, verse 37 the words that you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught. I mean, that's why we always pray with sinners at the altar to confess that they're a sinner and they want to change their life. We pray with them. Those words are meaningful only when they speak them out. You believe in your heart, Romans teaches, and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. There's something powerful about speaking and speaking the right things. It creates your destiny. So it would mean a lot if you would choose the right way. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up according to their needs that it may benefit those who are listening. So for me as a pastor, believe me, my friend, Every word that I speak is calculated. When I'm thinking about our church, I'm thinking about what will help this church, what might help your life. I'm in my office over here, the, the, uh, the playroom, the prayer room, uh, the nursery. And I'm thinking about words. I can't just carelessly say anything. Right. So those words are designed to give you life and to help you. Words of life. Let's close and look what's inside your heart. Amen. Because this is critical. Luke 6, 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaks. Amen. Jesus is teaching here even more than calculating and carefully speaking the right words. Amen. What's going on inside of your heart, in, the, in your mind? Do you have unforgiveness working? Do you have um, uh, a carnality? Or do you have like a fleshly way of thinking and living inside of your mind? Because this is actually the problem. It, 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 it's, it's revealing what your lips are saying. Jesus' teaching here is that it's more important to, in speaking right things is to have a right heart. Can you say amen? amen? Having your heart in the right place, having your heart right with God is where it's at, man. If you get a right heart, you repent of your sin, you get uh, a right heart by allowing God to cleanse your conscience and straighten out your relationships. Amen. We have to cleanse the way that we've been thinking. Amen. You probably would do your mind and your heart justice if you did not watch filthy things mm. on the internet mm. or watch shows mm. that are filled with wicked violence and perversion. Yeah. Because what you do is you're letting those things enter your eye gate and your ear gate and settle into your heart. Amen. Nobody here is, has the ability to avoid that. So I'm thinking with you about what you're putting inside of your heart. Mm -hmm. And then I also like to, to kind of reverse the statement a little bit. Out of the abundance of your mouth, the heart speaks. Mm -hmm. The words, the many words that you're speaking, we finally hear what you're saying and we discover what's inside of you. A tree is known by its fruit, Jesus taught, verse 43. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree is known by its fruit, for men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. So, friend of mine, your testimony is determined by the words that you speak. What's in your heart first? is revealed with your speech and then everybody knows the way that you talk, what you're saying and this develops your character it creates your testimony that means how people know you how people think about you you will become known by the advice that you give, by uh, the words that you're speaking, you're creating an example of your life by the things that you talk about What's important to you is generally what's on your mind. And if we focus on the good things of God's plan, maybe the scriptures, maybe uh, just, you know, having a, 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 a wonderful heart, a actually able to help other people, encourage them. If we focus on these things, then we also will have a good report with many people. Listen to me. There's a fellow by the name of Ananias. He and his wife, they sold the property. And they came to church and they lied about it. Acts 22, 12. Amen. Then a certain Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, but a good testimony. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I'm completely wrong about this. This is a different Ananias. I apologize. Acts 22, 12. This is a certain Ananias who was a devout man, according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews. Who dwelt there. In other words, the Jewish people knew him. They saw the way that he treated people. They heard the words that he was speaking. And they gave him a good report. They said, yes, he is a devout man. He is, he is a, 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 a Christian. He's a believer. And they came to me and they stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that same hour, I looked up at him. God used Ananias in the book of Acts, to go and pray for Saul, who had been blinded on the road to Damascus. This man, Ananias, was known as a devout man. He was devoted. And here's our scripture. I just want to touch on this for one moment before we close. John 6, 63. It is the spirit, Jesus, who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak to you are spirit. You know, you can curse people with your words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means a negative 
Like, you, you want them to die? You want them to fail? And the words that Jesus is inclining us to speak are words of life. Study the scriptures and enjoy the fruit of eternal life. You will have victory with all your re relationships. Amen. Did you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you learn how to speak the right words to people in your life, they are going to be so happy with you. Yes. They're going to be blessed. And your relationship, amen, is going to grow even stronger. They are going to become better people because of your words that you're choosing. And your life, yourself, you will be satisfied with the good fruit of your mouth. Amen. Amen. And the recompense of a man's hand will be rendered unto him. That's Proverbs 12, 14. Wise words have many benefits. They are healing words. Proverbs 12, 18. The words of the reckless pierce like sword. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. When we wisely choose our words, we can promote healing in other people. We can build each other up. We can edify them. We can help them. There's people that have been wounded and you can speak like a bomb to them, like a healing, like a salve or like an ointment as your yes. words are actually healing them. You can heal relationships. Think carefully, the Bible teaches in Proverbs 15, 28, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer. Mm. But the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Think about your marriage or about your relationship with your parents. Yes. When you start speaking right words to your spouse, or think how powerful those words are going to be in your home. Amen. Speak to your children with words of love and affirmation. Amen. Amen. They will gain a confidence instead of judgment and condemnation all the time. And there's a place for those kinds of things where you have to you know, correct children, discipline them once in a while. Yeah. But think how successful you're going to be on your job as you learn how to get along with everybody. Oh, here, let me help you get that. And you're not saying, uh, you know, hey, that's your job. No, good luck, buddy. No, but you're willing to help other people on your job. That's just a practical thing. You know, I really appreciate you. Thanks for coming to work. I don't have to do all the work myself. Yeah. Right? There are words that we can choose, and there are words of life. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads in a moment here. We want to pray for the lost. If you're not saved, amen. You uh, believe the lie of the devil. You're worthless. You have uh, uh, no uh, value. Amen. You've taken the bait of the devil, hook, line, and sinker. You've been lied to, deceived by the devil. But God says something completely different about you. He says, uh, you are worth dying for. The words that Jesus has spoken to you and I are timeless. I love you. And uh, I am willing to lay my life on the line. No man has love like this that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said, I call you friends. He loves you. And tonight, if you're not saved, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want you to listen to his words. And then the Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. Amen. And uh, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. Amen. He's speaking to you right now. I'm not mad at you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to condemn you. Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, where are your accusers? And she said, they're gone. He said, neither do I condemn you. Amen. Let the Spirit of God lead you into a relationship. Let God's Spirit <coughs> convict you tonight. And be sorry and let your sins be washed clean. That's you tonight. You want to get saved. You're not born again. You've never prayed a prayer of repentance and truly meant it. This is your first time praying. Amen. Lift up your hand if you want to get saved. 
Amen. No one's moving about. No one's looking around. This is between you and God. Lift up your hand if you're not right with him. You want to pray. You're ready to surrender to him. You're ready to believe his word. Amen. Or maybe you're a backslider. That means you were living for God at one point. Maybe as a young kid you believed in Jesus. You loved going to church. You loved to talk about Jesus when you were younger. But the Bible says that sometimes the seed is planted among the thorns. And it grows up. But there's the cares of this life that choke the life. Choke the word out of people. And they cannot produce fruit. That's you. You're backslidden tonight. And God's presence is here to convict you and to help you to be healed, to give you the words of life. Amen. Lift up your hand. You'd like to pray tonight and answer this altar call. That's you. We're not going to hold this all service. Amen. Praise God. This is why God brought you here, to get right with him. Amen. To be healed in your broken heart. If you're not saved or maybe you're a backslider, you want to pray. Amen. Praise God. Let's change the order of the service. I'd like to open up the altar if you'd like to come forward and pray. Maybe God spoke to you and try to deposit something in your heart tonight. Amen. Shed some light on some aspect of the way you've been thinking or talking, perhaps. And you want to come forward. We're going to open up the altars and sing this song together. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. church. We're very grateful that you're here, and uh, I want to uh, ask you to uh, have a good week. Yeah. Amen. Pray yeah. for us. We're, we're going to be traveling on Saturday if we don't see you, so pray for us as we're heading out of town. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Lydia to uh, send us on our way with a blessing. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you for, for allowing us to come to church today. Lord, I ask you to give us traveling grace as we go back home. Um, yes, Lord. I, I thank you for allowing us to hear the sermon. Lord, word, words of life, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for the for using Pastor Paul as a vessel, Lord, and, and encouraging mm -hmm. us for yes. us in the sermon, Lord. And I love you with all my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.